This is about the core concept of educating ourselves about what impacts marginalized communities and effective responses. I spoke to a person of color at a Black Lives Matter demonstration. She works in education in a predominantly white community with a white staff, but an increasing number of students of color in the system. I asked her what was most challenging for her. He shared three things. When people live in denial of the issues of racism in the school. Number two, when people think they have it all figured out. And number three, when people want her to do their own work for them. Now notice what's not on the list. People who consciously embrace racist ideas, attitudes, behaviors, and policies. It goes without saying that people who organize their lives around racism and their identity as part of the caste system would be challenging but at least she can see them coming. Add to that the weight of those who live in denial about racism, and you can see the challenges that she and others face in trying to create a more equitable educational system for all. But notice that two of the three that she's mentioned here were from people wanting to be allies or assuming that they were, mostly, of course, white people. White culture discourages people from learning by lifting up the value of being right. It is more important in white culture to be right than to be willing to learn. This is because of the emphasis on competition for status in white culture. Being wrong can lose you status, so we practice never being wrong. People that reject racist ideas are often still competing for status, just by a different set of rules as they see it. When I first began to do the work of allyship, I thought that I had a lot of insight into why our society had an anti-Muslim bigotry and what we could do about it. Some of this was born out of doing some anti-racism work myself. Some of it was born out of my work as a Christian pastor. Some of it has stood the test of time, but not all of it, and maybe not most of it, Academics and leaders in the field of countering hate, dehumanization, and anti-Muslim bigotry have changed many of the ways that I approach my work. Even if some of my intuitions were pretty good, even those intuitions have been shaped by reading, listening, learning, and asking for feedback when appropriate. Here's one example of a big change for me. At first, I thought that Muslims needed to condemn violence by other Muslims more forcefully. They needed to distance themselves from those that used Islam to justify their violence. There are two problems with this. First, expecting a group to condemn violence by members of their in-group implies that they are responsible for those actions. There is a great debate within the Muslim community about whether they should be condemning every act of violence. On the one hand, Muslim tradition does not condone violence, except for in self-defense, and even then it's limited. On the other, human beings operate more by association than by logic. If the only time people hear about Muslims is in connection to some form of violence, they will continue to deepen that association in their minds. So basically, condemning violence at every turn effectively buys into collective blame. It is understandable that a community being dehumanized in the caste system would want to distance themselves from violent acts, but doing so can have unintended consequences of cementing that racist perception. The national organizations I participate with all offer trainings that help me to create a better strategy, one that is outlined in the Communicating for Change part of this course. Now, as I learned, I was invited into the process, and as it turns out, I wrote the first draft of that process. But only after I had learned from the thought leaders in the field and had my skills proven in many events and contexts. I was flat wrong about the real problem, and I was flat wrong about a positive response. I did not have it all figured out. Having been born into an Islamophobic culture, I really believe that Islam taught violence. I believed the news coverage, the political speech, and 
the often subtle Christian supremacy of my own church. And I believed the hate groups that use Islam as a cover for their violence. My very perception about the problem and the solution that I thought was important to use was a collection of racist thoughts, attitudes, and perceptions. As I recognized that racism, I found myself losing sleep, being disturbed, even having tears, and anxious. If I was wrong about this central thing, well, then what else was I wrong about? A lot. It is also important, however, to do our own work. Imagine how exhausting it would be for people of color to be constantly teaching white people how to respond to racism while they're trying to change the institutions and structures that create the system. Imagine that. Imagine hiking up a mountain without a trail and having to carry other people's packs for them. Now imagine having to pick up people's packs when they drop them in front of you and demand that you pick them up. That would be exhausting. If we wish to work as allies do, we need to read, write, listen, and learn. We need to work on accepting that we do not understand, at least not fully, the challenges and positive responses that BIPOC need to help create institutional and structural change. Let's do our work first. It will take more time than we think because many of our perceptions have been shaped by the caste system. We will need to do much of that work on our own or as a part of groups like this. When we have done consistent and hard work, then we can check our perceptions with people of color or more practiced allies, after we have been given permission to do so, of course. And it is important to ask. We all need someone to pick up our pack once in a while, so now imagine again. How different would it be if we could be a team, each carrying our own packs, but also offering to take on part of a load of Black, Indigenous, people of color, and other groups, so they can rest for a moment or two, now and then? Imagine that. Learning about what impacts the Muslim community and learning effective responses did not just benefit my Muslim neighbors, it also began a process of liberation from those racist ideas and attitudes. The pain was worth it. I think the pain will be worth it for you too. I have learned a bit more how to learn, and that I do not need to be right to have value. I look forward to the rest of my, my journey, and I look forward to hearing about yours.